the Dream Stone. Hi everyone, what I've got to show you today is the uh, Dreamstone Simple Miniatures game uh, and I'm going to be talking you through uh, a few of the rules, having a look at how the game works. Um, this, uh, as you'll appreciate, is a home printed version of the game and these aren't the actual components. Um, they will be much uh, glossier, shinier, thicker, more durable. This is just what I was able to do with my uh, printer at home to prove the concept, but it, it looks nice. Um, this is, as per the title, a simple miniatures game. So there is not a lot to the rules. There's your, there's your rules with a few extra bits and bobs on the back for playing uh, the advanced the advanced game. Um, but for a simple game, as is quite often uh, the case with um, with some very simple miniatures games, uh, there's quite a good degree of strategy in this game. So if you are uh, experienced at playing games, um, this isn't going to be too simplistic for you. This is going to be um, a game that you're able to uh, to pick up and sort of analyze a little bit how it's working, plan your strategies a bit more carefully, uh, pick your teams a bit more carefully. But if you're completely new to the world of miniature gaming, it's going to be very, very accessible for you. You'll be able to pick it up and play it with no uh, no trouble at all. Uh, just let me move these miniatures off the board here a second. So what we've got here is the uh, play mat. Uh, and the first play mat is for um, the tower room where the dreamstone is kept. Uh, now, if we unlock uh, future stretch goals on the reverse side of this, um, there'll be another mat that will be a Zordrak's throne room in Vilfied. Um, We've got a Noopville uh, mat uh, and a Watt Forest mat planned, um, and there'll be more mats uh, in the future. Um, and each of those will have a slightly different scenario, a slightly different way of playing the game. But this is the starter game, I guess, um, and, and perfectly versatile in and of itself. Um, so we're going to start off by picking and setting up our teams. In the basic game, you get three uh, three models uh, to pick from. In the advanced game, when we start throwing in some extra rules, uh, you'll get four models. And there are spaces on uh, the end of the board here for your team. So for the, the dream team, who are the good forces on this side, and the Erpney Elite Squad, the nightmare forces um, on the other side. And in these little rectangles, this is where uh, your character's playing cards will be, because all of the, uh, all of the miniatures come with a playing card that gives you the stats for playing um, that miniature in the game. Um, they may also come with extra cards that detail uh, items, equipment, special rules, etc. But in, in the basic game, we're just looking at the um, at their, at their stat line. Um, so you put the cards in there to, to, uh, to show what team you've picked. Uh, and then starting with the uh, Erpney Elite Squad, you get to place your miniatures. Now the uh, the Dreamstone lives in the middle, that's the objective for the Erpneys, they're trying to grab the Dreamstone. Uh, apologies I haven't painted this one yet, um, I will get around to painting the resin Dreamstone but this is this is just as it comes. Um, the, the aim for the Erpney squad is to capture the Dreamstone um, and to get it off the board down the uh, staircase out of the tower room which is off this end here. Uh, and the Erpneys start crashing through a window from above. Uh, maybe they've jumped out of a knitted balloon or uh, out of a whirly ped or they've been catapulted up. However they've got there, they end up smashing through the tower room window. Um, and the first member of your squad, which can be any member you pick, goes on that red space. The dream team then gets to pick a member of their squad to place on the blue space there. Um, they respond to the, the smashing of the window and they rush up to the tower room and they come in through the door here. Um, then Nightmare Squad gets to place another. Dream Team gets to place another. Nightmare Squad gets to place another. Uh, and these uh, additional place miniatures have to be in any hexagon that's surrounding the start space. But once you've placed one, then you can place in any surrounding hex. So you can place there. So my uh, my Erpney Elite Squad, if I wanted to, I could place there, then there, then there, and that gets them nice and close to the Dreamstone. Now, 
the, uh, the mechanics are very simple. On your turn, each of your models can do two things. Um, the first thing that each of your models does is free. You just get to do it. So there's a series of actions here on, uh, on the rule sheet. Uh, and for example, one of those actions uh, is a run action that's to move three hexes. So I could go pick with, with Rufus, I'll just go one, two, three. That's his free action. Now the second action is a testing action. Uh, and that means that you have to roll a dice. And what dice you roll deter it is determined by what it says in your stat line. So you'll have four stats. They are muscle, they are wits, poise, and bravery. Uh, and each action, there are eight to pick from, each action is either a muscle action, a wits action, a poise action, or a bravery action. And your stat line will give a symbol, a red um, triangle for a four-sided dice, a blue square for a six-sided dice. The, the ones included with the game will be blue. This is just the only one that I had that looks similar. Um, it's green. The uh, eight-sided dice is a um, diamond-shaped yellow symbol. And the 10-sided dice, which again will be green, is a green circle. So we look at the card and we see what Rufus' his stat line is like. Um, and if he wants to run here, it may be that he has a blue square. So that means throwing a d6. And in order for him to do it, I need to roll four or higher. So that's a one. So that means that he hasn't managed to, and not only has he not managed to, a roll of one uh, is always a blunder. Uh, and what happens if you blunder is that you fall over. So he's tried to push himself to the limits. He hasn't managed it, and he's taken a knock and fallen over. I've still got two people to use, so I can use... Um, let's just move these around a little bit. There we go. Um, so I can I've used my, uh, my entire squad now, and I can split this up. Um, so I have to take two actions with Rufus. I could take one action with Amberly. I could take one action with Albert. Then I can come back to Amberly and take another action, but it will be a testing action. And um, then I can come back to Albert. But once everyone has done two things or you don't want to do any more, that's the end of your turn. Uh, and it's on with the, uh, on with the other team. Now, fallen over, um, models, the first thing they have to do in order to do any more actions is stand up, recover. Uh, now recovering, um, because it's the first thing that you do is an automatic, but that then means that everything that you do from this point is a testing action. So you may lose your entire turn if you've, if you've been knocked down. Um, the other thing that happens is that when you're knocked down, you take a point of panic. Um, and this is important because whilst the way that the Erpneys win is to get the Dreamstone off through uh, the doorway out of the tower room, the way that the Dream Team win is to panic the Erpneys so much that they give up and they flee back to Vilthied. So all of your models have a panic tolerance on them. Um, so Frizzies is five, Nugs is six, Blobs is eight. Every time they take a knock, um, so they're knocked down, um, or uh, they get frightened, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, every time that happens to them, they take a point of panic. Um, and you can use a counter or a little dice uh, on their card to show what their current panic level is. You can uh, reduce the panic level um, by doing a testing action that's similar to a recover with one of your other um, models, but it just uses up their actions. Uh, so um, once they've taken more panic than they have in their panic tolerance, then they run away off the board uh, and then you're down to two. When you're down to one um, squad member by themselves, uh, then the start of every turn they're taking um, panic because they don't like to be by themselves. Um, so at that point, it's very likely uh, that you will have lost the game um, and it means that you're not just running one guy round and round and round the board for ages. The game will end shortly after you've knocked out the rest of the team. But there's still a chance for them to um, 
to be able to get the, the stone and get off. The uh, Nightmare Squad can also win by panicking uh, the Dream Team, but they're at home, they're nice and safe, they're not so frightened, so um, they're, they're unlikely to panic, they've got much higher panic tolerances than the Erpneys have, so the, the way the Erpneys need to win is to focus on getting uh, the stone out. Uh, so the actions that you can do are um, you can barge through somebody, so you can't ordinarily move through a hexagon that's occupied by um, a model you've got to move around, so that uses up more of your movement, um, interferes with uh, traveling places, but if you make a, a muscles action you can barge straight through knocking down uh, the person that you've barged through. You can do a grab, so if Rufus has got the stone, let's say that's Rufus's card, so I've put the stone on his card to show that he's currently holding it. Um, with a muscle action, Nub can try and grab the stone off Rufus um, and then uh, get away. Um, you can command, so any uh, model that you can see, so it, let's say Blob is, is doing a command action and his troops are here, for example, um, he can command anyone within line of sight, and that line of sight is along a row of hexagons, but is blocked by the first miniature in the way. So here, Blob can order Frizz to do something, but he can't order Nug to do something because Rufus is blocking uh, is blocking his sight there. Um, but he could order Frizz, um, and ordered models get to take another uh, another action. So let's say, for example, um, Blob's out of the way. He doesn't have much of a chance of uh, of doing anything. But Frizz is stood next to Amberly, and Amberly has the stone. Blob might use one of his actions to um, command Frizz to take the stone, and then Frizz is free to use a free action to run away. Um, he's not dependent on a dice roll in order to do that. Uh, you can do a dodge, um, which is a, a preemptive. Uh, action. If you take a dodge as your last move during the turn, so you do nothing else afterwards, um, that means that um, you can't be knocked over um, until your next turn. So that's just, uh, it protects you, but it limits what you can do. Um, run, we've covered, that's moving three hexes. Um, throwing, you can throw an object, let's say the Dreamstone, any distance um, along a row of hexagons. If you throw it to, let's say, Frizz is throwing to Nug, he's within a line of hexagons with nothing in between, so he can throw the stone um, easily to Nug. If he fails and drops it, then uh, it will go a certain distance and then it will scatter. So you, you pick a, a hexagon and you roll a dice and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six into one of those spaces. And it may be that there's a, another model in one of those spaces and they get the stone at that point. Um, you can recover, we've covered that one. Uh, or you can take an unclaimed object. So if the dream stone's in the middle uh, at the start of the game, um, or if it's been uh, fallen or it's been knocked uh, out of somebody's hands and is lying um, unclaimed, a take action is what you need. Um, to pick that up. And that's really all there is uh, to the game. Um, if you're playing with the advanced rules, uh, there are a few uh, extra bits and pieces. So although these are the six miniatures that are included uh, with the starter set, you can use any of the miniatures um, that Oakband are producing. They've all got their own stat cards and some of them have uh, special rules and abilities that are listed in the um, in the advanced game. Uh, the only one with the special advanced abilities that's included in the base game is Albert. Um, he's flying, which means that he can move through other models when he wouldn't normally be able to. You can't stop on a, a hexagon that's occupied by somebody else, but you can move through. Um, and he is terrifying, which means that any model that gets moved through takes a point of, uh, of panic. So the Erpneys being terrified of uh, Albert the Savage flying dogfish 
uh, means that any time he moves through them, um, they're getting, uh, they're, uh, yeah, taking um, panic. So he's a, a very powerful weapon for uh, spreading fear and panic among the Erpneys. It's likely that the Erpneys are going to need to dedicate some of their efforts to keeping Albert occupied so that the others can uh, can achieve their ends. Uh, if you take models like Erpgore, for example, you can either feature Erpgore as a model uh, playing piece moving around the board, or if you take Erpgore, it will let you take an invention, um, which may be rocket packs, it may be um, the voice of Zordrak, it may be uh, a shrinking ray. There's all kinds of... Um, all kinds of items that will come included with with Erpgore, which have their own effects on the models on the board. Then uh, things like uh, the Watts will have their leaves that let them um, fly and move fast, um, and their globes that let them make the zap attacks, so attacking uh, at a range across the board. Um, and then the different mats will come into play with different objectives. So while this is a simple get the stone, get it off, or inflict panic on uh, the other team, there will be specific scenarios you're trying to achieve different things on, on the different mats. So all of those will again expand the rule set. So I hope that's been interesting. If you've got any questions, uh, message me uh, either through the, uh, through the Kickstarter, find me on Facebook, message me on Facebook, uh, leave a comment on um, the videos on YouTube, um, or any other way that you know to get in touch with me and I'll be very happy to, uh, to answer your questions.